Firstly, I would just like to say thank you for all of your support and love for us. We love you and appreciate you. SpaceX was seeking approval to construct a new launch pad, new landing pad, and other launch-related infrastructure that would support its existing reusable launch vehicle operations in the South Texas facility. The expansion would have been built on about 17 acres, including wetlands and mudflats. But the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has withdrawn SpaceX's application to expand launch facilities in Boca Chica, Texas, after the company failed to provide the environmental information the agency requested. The Army Corps of Engineers is responsible for oversight of wetland development under Section 404 of the Clean Water Act. In this role, the Corps makes sure that developers do not harm natural resources and drinking water, nor cause stress to endangered species and their habitat when alternative sites or approaches could be used instead. In a letter to SpaceX dated March 7th of 2022, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers said that after repeated requests for specific environmental impact information, Elon Musk's aerospace venture had failed to say how it might be able to build its facilities differently, or whether it could locate them elsewhere to minimize harm to wetlands, water, and wildlife. Bloomberg previously reported on the withdrawal. The agency noted that on February 10th of 2022, SpaceX CEO and founder Elon Musk held a press conference where he explained that if regulatory approvals didn't move along in Texas, allowing the company to expand its Starship and Super Heavy rocket testing and launches soon, he would move a bulk of SpaceX operations to Florida's Cape Canaveral and Kennedy Space Center. If that were to happen, Musk said at the time, SpaceX would turn its Boca Chica assets into more of a research and development hub. The Corps told SpaceX it could reinitiate its application if it still wants to pursue the vertical launch area expansion. The Corps did not immediately respond to requests for comment on whether SpaceX had replied or submitted the requested information in the past month. SpaceX did not immediately respond to a request for comment on the news either. In a parallel review process, an environmental engineer who blogs under the handle ESG Hound reported that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has expressed similar concerns. FWS submitted comments to the Federal Aviation Administration saying SpaceX has not provided adequate environmental information to obtain approval to expand in Boca Chica. All of the evidence points to a possibility that SpaceX will turn Starbase into a research and development hub, as Elon Musk said. Perhaps Musk, like us, is too sick of the FAA's delays. To date, things are going pretty much like the worst case scenario Musk himself mentioned in his February update. Same old, same old. SpaceX itself also is rapidly constructing Starship's first Florida launch pad and tower. This takes place as concrete work at LC-39A continues. All said and done, SpaceX is well on its way to replicating Starbase's orbital Starship launch site on the East Coast, hopefully ensuring that Starship will be able to begin orbital test flights within the next 6 to 12 months, even if the company's Starbase environmental review continues to be bogged down by bureaucracy. In short, all still will end up going SpaceX's way. Most recently, SpaceX and NASA refined the Crew-4 launch date as Axiom astronauts focus on science on the ISS. The four astronauts of SpaceX's Crew-4 mission to the ISS have had their launch pushed back again to April 23rd. NASA officials said in a statement on April 12th that the duo chose that date to complete final pre-launch processing. Originally scheduled to launch around April 15th, SpaceX and NASA's Crew-4 mission has already been delayed four times by a series of delays that pushed Axiom-1 from March 30th to April 8th. If AX-1's return to Earth is delayed any further by bad weather or technical problems, Crew-4 could slip even further past its latest target of April 23rd. Additionally, SpaceX has also just received some new contracts. South Korea is deepening its relationship with SpaceX with a contract to launch at least five military reconnaissance satellites on Falcon 9 rockets by the end of 2025. According to Defense Acquisition Program Administration, or DAPA, spokeswoman Park Gung-young, 
The deal was made to launch five satellites involved in the 425 project, a space-based reconnaissance project the Defense Ministry launched in 2018 for closer monitoring of North Korea's military activities. The first launch is slated for the end of 2023, delivering an 800kg electro-optical infrared satellite to low Earth orbit. The spokeswoman declined to share the terms and conditions of the deal as well as launch schedules for the other four satellites. Astrona's Space Technologies Core also signed a contract with SpaceX for a dedicated Falcon 9 launch to put four Astronus Micro GEO communications satellites into service in 2023. The micro GEOs will be launched to a custom geostationary orbit, with the four satellites individually conducting on-orbit maneuvers to inject themselves into their orbital slots. While SpaceX is operating at full capacity with a series of projects as well as a dense flight schedule, NASA just wasted a third attempt to fuel up the SLS rocket. NASA began the Artemis 1 wet dress rehearsal on April 1st and intended to wrap it up on April 3rd, but several technical issues cropped up, twice foiling efforts to load propellant into the SLS tanks. The mission team initially delayed and eventually aborted the test to accommodate the launch of the private AX-1 astronaut mission, which lifted off from a neighboring pad at KSC on April 8th. The plan was to resume the wet dress on the 11th of April, but team members soon discovered a faulty valve in the Artemis 1 stack's mobile launch tower, a problem that pushed the beginning of the procedure back to April 12th and caused a modification to the test design. The team decided to fuel up only the SLS core stage instead of both the core stage and its upper stage. The wet dress was supposed to conclude on April 14th, but that's not happening, given that the mission team won't perform the scheduled simulated countdowns after encountering several problems including a hydrogen leak. I am utterly speechless. Maybe NASA should name the SLS to SOS, because you know, it's always, yeah, anyway. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to tell us what you thought about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Which part did you like the most? Every comment and share helps us grow. Thanks a lot.